Well, good morning, everybody. I see that everybody's, you know, it's uh, 8 o'clock out here in beautiful Federal Way, Washington, right outside of Seattle, <clears throat> and uh, which means it's 11 o'clock back east somewhere, and everybody, look at all those names. Wow, we have got a great, uh, a, a lot of attendance here today. That is really uh, spectacular for uh, this rental show uh, webinar. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, well, there's still some people getting kind of logged on here, but I'll, I'll introduce myself very quickly. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. I've been uh, consulting for corporations uh, on their marketing and uh, strategies for, boy, about 27, going on 28 years now. And, of course, a big part of when you're working with a company on, strategy, on their marketing is trade shows. And so as a result, I've also ended up working with a lot of associations, including <clears throat> the American American Rental Association and helping them to build a better uh, rental show for all of you and uh, so uh, um, so here we are boy what are we uh, a little over a month away from uh, the 2013 rental show and it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great everybody's very excited about it um, now before we kick into this uh, presentation about it's all about the ROI let me do a little bit of housekeeping here with you very quickly. First of all, if you can hear me, I, and I assume that you can hear me, but I would like to just double check this, leave me a little note over there, you know, in your chat box down below, just l send me a little note saying that you're hearing me and uh, so I know that uh, uh, I'm coming through uh, with you. Thank you. Oh, wow, hearing me in Oklahoma. Thank you so much. I don't know what the weather is like in Oklahoma. I assume it's better than it is here. We are really, really getting dumped on. Thanks, everybody. Loud and clear. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> now, I also want to point out to you that if you look down right below that arrow, you'll see a little button that says close for where the chat, right, you know, above the chat window. And if you click that, then you'll see that it kind of opens up the uh, screen for the uh, visuals that I've got here uh, for you. And uh, what we'll do is that uh, Leavenworth, there's somebody in Leavenworth and Whidbey Island. Oh my gosh, the Pacific Northwest is well represented here. Thank you. Um, and uh, But if you click that, that'll open up that window so you got a better, bigger picture. And then if you do have questions, and all you got to do is just... Uh, um, click that one that that op you know I think when you click it close I think it then turns into the word open and then you can click that open and then you can send me a question now I may not get to your questions as uh, as you ask them but I will certainly have time for questions and Q and A Q&A at the end if I don't answer them for you but you can just uh, leave me a question and uh, send that to me and then uh, at and then uh, click the close button again and you've got the big picture so. Uh, with the housekeeping all uh, set aside uh, and uh, all, all these great messages coming in from people, we are all over the U.S. Uh, uh, today, and that that is great. And we're all going to be in, where are we going to be? Vegas uh, next month. Of course, I will be there too. Um, but one of the big things that... Uh, like I say, I've been uh, working with corporations for almost 28 years now, and... Uh, uh, you know, one of the things about trade shows that I realized, and I should tell you, I come from your shoes, okay? I come from the the corporate shoes. I come from the exhibitor's shoes. You know, I come from the marketing, sales and marketing arena. That's what I, you know, my last real job was in sales and marketing for, uh, actually for a, a large Japanese toy company. And, uh, uh, and I learned a very hard hard lesson uh, and that was that uh, most companies including mine at that time are not they, they really aren't as good at trade shows as they probably should be and could be and the reason and and why is that important well number one you're spending a lot of money to go to these events you know you're, you're spending a lot of money a lot of time and energy preparing to go to the rental show and and you really should expect and you deserve to get a, a what I would call a meaningful and significant return on investment from, from that time and energy and, and investment at, at the show. Um, however, nowadays, 
you know, it seems like uh, more and more companies are uh, having difficulty doing that. And so, uh, uh, so I've taken it upon myself to help companies learn how to absolutely make make money at the shows and it really starts with learning how to do this correctly there's a there's a perspective about trade shows that kind of is a historical uh, uh, perspective that uh, um, that the uh, um, let's see whoops somebody's asking me how to enable audio I don't know everybody says they can hear me just fine but uh, you know um, if you can't hear me I can't answer hmm. oh well uh, sorry uh, uh, but um, and uh, oh, and I should also say I'm recording this, and I will be putting putting this online for everybody too as well. Um, but um, uh, ROI is a, a, a problem because we tend to be more historical in our perspective and our approach to uh, trade shows uh, than we are uh, based on current situations. Okay, and let, and let me let me let me uh you know um ex explain what i mean to you uh w w about why this is a problem these days uh and it, it kind of boils down to this you know historically uh the rental show as well as many other shows in most other industries pardon me while i take a little a little drink here uh to wet my whistle ah sorry about that uh and uh, you know, we, we, we go we used to go into these shows and remember I, I come from your shoes you your shoes too, is that I would go to the show and I would go there planning on writing lots and lots of orders. And then as a result, uh, at the end of the show, I knew immediately based on the number of orders that I wrote and the size of the orders that I wrote, and then I would total them up, of course, I would know immediately whether I had a successful trade show or not. And I would know immediately if I if I had good ROI. Now, certainly, and I will say that, that uh, more the exception to the rule today than, than probably most trade shows, uh, in certainly in the USA, probably on the planet, um, is that the rental show still has a lot of order writing going on. And that's okay. I, well, I mean, that's okay. Of course that's okay. It's awesome, is that there's still a lot of order writing going on at the show. But you know what? My understanding is there's probably not as much order writing at the show nowadays as there were, say, maybe, you know, 10 years ago or even five years ago at the show. So, so you see, the idea is that if we go into it with this perspective that we've always had, that we're used to writing orders at the show, well, then if, it, if it's an order writing show, then yeah, oh, you know, Yahoo, we're happy. You know, we, we are glad because we know how to measure our ROI. But what if we're not writing as many orders as we used to? What if some of us aren't even writing any orders anymore and now you know what no we're not writing orders well we're not sure maybe we are writing you know not sure you know. and and because of this we're not really sure how to measure our ROI at the shows and to give you an example of what I'm talking about is is that you see then then as a result of that we we tend to start um, coming up with okay well I can't measure it based on just orders written at the show so I've got to go find some other criteria that are going to help me you know uh, uh, come up with some type of measurement so that I can sort of at least uh, prove to myself in my gut that uh, uh, that I got some kind of ROI now what has typically happened as a result of that is that way too many uh, exhibitors set up what I call the wrong criteria for that. Now I'm going to give you an example right here. Uh, there is another trade show in another industry, another, you know, completely different industry where uh, another, another event that I've been working with where one of their large exhibitors decided to stop exhibiting. And they, they basically said the reason why they stopped exhibiting was because they just couldn't get, you know, they couldn't get any ROI out of the show. And, and they even published in their blog why they were not going to be going to the show. And in that blog, they outlined the criteria that they use to measure their success at that show. And here's the list that they published, okay? This is actual exhibitor criteria from them. Now take a look at this very quickly. What do we see there? Lead generation, current attendance, previous attendance, show location, booth location, competitor presence, cost to exhibit. 
Now here's the sad thing about this, is that these are the typical criteria that I see from a lot of companies, is that if they can't, if they're, if they can't write orders, like this company said that they were you know, not going to be able to write orders at the show. And so they were looking for new criteria, and this is what they came up with. But if we go through this list, here's what ends up, here's what we end up having here, okay? Out of this list, lead generation, well, yeah, absolutely. Lead generation is definitely a criteria that is what I would consider to be a meaningful measurable criteria, right? Yeah, we want to generate leads. And in fact, that today is probably the number one uh, objective that companies have for going to events. But there's a catch, there's a catch, and I'll explain that to you here in just a second. Uh, but, uh, and cost to exhibit? Well, yeah, okay, that's, you know, that's the, 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 the cost of being there. Now, what we've got here is essentially an X over Y. It's kind of convenient that, that the lead generation is at the top, cost to exhibit is at the bottom. It's kind of an X over Y, you know, above the line, below the line type of stuff, that the above the line stuff is income, below the line stuff is outgo, and so the cost to exhibit is in the is below the line and lead generation hopefully leads to income and you know and of course our objective is that our the above the line number ends up being much larger than the below the line number so so yeah those two are uh, have impact on how to measure your ROI but look at those other five current attendance previous attendance show location booth location competitor presence, okay? What do these have to do with ROI? The answer is nothing. They have nothing to do with ROI. You can, pay, you know, uh, and, and yet they tend to be what I call the default fallback answers that companies use today because of their inability to measure, to truly measure ROI. They come back and they say, well, I, you know, I can't write orders, so I can't you know, actually write, you know, you know, determine my success right there at the show. So what else are the, is there that, that has numbers to it or that has some type of quantifiable uh, um, factor to it that I can say, well, I can point at that and say, well, that had that impacted my ROI. OK, well, attendance at the show. You know what? I'm going to show you something here. Attendance at the show has has very little to do with your success. Uh, previous attendance has nothing to do with your success this year. Show location. You know, I often say show location. Uh, you know, people will say, oh, you know, we'd be better off in Orlando than we are in Vegas, or we'd be better off in, in well, no, I won't say Atlanta. I know we won't say Atlanta for, for the rental show, but uh, but we, we you know, might, might say we'd be better, better off somewhere else other, other than Las Vegas. But the fact of the matter is, as I explain to exhibitors in all industries, if I can deliver, and I'll, I'm just going to use an arbitrary number here, if I can deliver 10,000 buyers to you in Nawbone, Indiana at midnight on December 31st, you'll be there. Location, show location really has very little to do with, with your success. Booth location, people tend to fall into that trap because then they say, well, booth location impacts my traffic uh, and so, and the traffic impacts my success and everything like that. And I, and I go, you know what? Booth location has very, very, very little to do with your success at, at your show. And if you are depending upon booth location to measure your success, well, you need to pay pay attention to the rest of this webinar, <laughs> okay? Competitor presence, you know what? I don't care what my, my competitors are doing. I mean, I'll pay attention to what they're doing, uh, you know, but the fact of the matter is, is that if I, if I decide for myself that there's gonna be a large enough quantity of pros, prospects, of, pro, of prospects and current customers that are gonna be in a certain location, well, I'm gonna be there whether my competition is gonna be there or not. I just don't care. So you see, those things to me are really not big deals when it comes to measuring my success at the show because they don't have any impact on pure ROI. They're just kind of like gut feeling uh, measurements. So, um, you know, you know, I mean, it really boils down to what, and we all know this, okay? You can't manage what you don't measure. So you see, we, we go to the show and if we are unable to measure our ROI, well, if we can't have, you know, if we can't measure numbers that have impact on our bottom line, well, then it, then it's almost impossible for us to manage it. And that's, we don't want that, right? You know, so, so what you measure must matter. 
Remember, like I said, total attendance, that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, does, is the competition there? It, it doesn't matter. My booth location, it doesn't matter. That's, not, that's really not a measurable thing uh, uh, as, as well as uh, uh, you know, how that's going to impact at the end, at the end of the sh uh, your results at the end of the show. Obviously, like I said, if you are going to go to the event, you want to make sure that your uh, that your target customer is going to be there. But the way that you start to measure your ROI is you start with the end goal. This is a big duh, you know? This is not some, this is, this is not a uh, total rocket science, not something that we haven't heard before. So let me give you, uh, let me give you some steps in what I'm talking about here. Uh, and, uh, and so step number one is what I call defining your governing objectives. Defining your governing objectives. Hmm. Governing objectives. Well, what, you know, what's he talking about? Well, really, what I'm talking about are what are your fiscal goals? Now, this is a question that you know when I ask this question of uh, corporations, when I sit down with them and they say, "Well, let's go go out and and uh, uh, do a marketing campaign, or let's develop a marketing strategy, or let's develop uh, you know a plan for," uh, and it doesn't matter what media you use, but we'll use the trade show as an example, uh, and. Uh, 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 you know, and and then I say, well, what are your fiscal goals? They go, well, what's that got to do with our our uh, campaign for the trade show? And my response is, it should have everything to do with your camp campaign for the trade show because every single marketing tool that you use is supposed to help you hit your numbers. That's the idea. It's supposed to hit, help you hit the big numbers that you set for your company, no matter how big your company is or how small it is. Every one of us sets fiscal goals every year. And, uh, and I'm going to use an example here where let's just say that your, that your company uh, has decided that you are going to generate $10 million this fiscal uh, year. All right. And that would be the first question I would want to know the answer to. See, and then I would say, OK, let's break that down. All right, what do we mean by the $10 million? And I'm, I'm gonna keep this real simple here for this webinar's sake, but really, the, the, the conversation doesn't get much more complicated uh, you know, when I'm sitting down with people one-on-one. -on -one. Essentially, I say then, okay, what percentage of that number are you expecting to come from your repeat customers? And what percentage do you expect to come from new customers? And, you know, and it'll sometimes come out to something like this as an example that, oh, somebody says to me, well, we want to do 80% repeat and we want to do 20% new customers. And so in this case, of course, it comes out to $8 million for, for repeat customers, $2 million for uh, new customers. And then I say, okay, what is your average sale? Now we know that the sales are all over the place, but okay, what is the average sale whether it's an opening sale whether it's a year you know you, you know how do you determine the average uh, um, um, income or average revenue that you can generate from from a customer and if your average sale let's say in this case is fifty thousand dollars okay so now these are these are starting to be the numbers that we can use so now looking at this then the question is okay which what you know which of these do we want to focus on? Where do we want to focus on, you know, when it comes to going to the rental show? And let's say, and, and in most cases, the exhibitor, the company is going to say to me, well, we go to the show to get new customers. We want to go get, we, we want to find new people. That's the typical answer when they come. Now, you know, we can, we can get into a big discussion about this. Like, like, for example, I can say, well, the purpose of business is to create and maintain long-term customer relationships. The purpose of business, create, maintain long-term customer relationships. Now that means that one, number one, we wanna go out and, and uh, create a new relationship. And then number two, we wanna keep that relationship. Well, we could look at trade shows. And in, and in fact, most of the time I will say to a company, I'll say, look, we need to look at both of these. And the reason why is because if we just focus on new customers and we just go looking for new customers, well, and we don't have a plan for our current customers, I mean, certainly they, they'll come by, they'll say hello and stuff like that. But if we don't have a plan of attack for them, well, what are they to our competition? They are prospects. And our competition 
might have the same approach of going out to, to find new customers. And so they're pulling out all the stops to, to take customers away from us. And so I often say, well, there, you know, there are two big reasons why you want to, uh, well, or actually there's several big reasons why you want to include current customers as part of your strategy. Number one is to reinforce and enhance their already intelligent decision of working with you. Okay, number two is you want to reinforce your superiority over the competition with them. Number three, very often we have products uh, and services that, uh, that we have to offer that they are not currently using, right? And we see that a lot. Or we'll have new products and services that they aren't, they, they're not aware of yet, so we want to talk to them about that as well. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why we would want to do that, but again, for simple to, to keep things simple in this discussion, I'm going to say let's focus on the 20% new customers, the $2 million in annual revenues that we are looking for from uh, new customers. And we'll say, okay, so that's, that's what we want to focus on at the rental show this year. Now, I'm going to ask a question. The next question is one, you know what, you probably don't know the answer to. What is your closing rate? Now, I'm I say that because just not not out of out of being mean or anything like that, uh, but just from my 28 years of ex my you know 28 years of experience of uh, working with corporations, you know, in a hundred I, I think the last time we counted it was 124 different industries. We worked with you know uh, you know giant, massive, huge Fortune 100 companies, you know, down to the to the small mom and pops, and. Uh, you know, and whenever I come to this question, almost nobody knows the answer to this. What is your closing rate? And, you know, essentially, what am I saying? I'm saying if I hand you 10 qualified prospects uh, uh, and, uh, you know, how many new customers will you come up with? Uh, and it, it, most companies do not know the answer to that. Now, that is a number that, man, if you do know the answer to that, well, then you can, pr you know, accurately project revenues in the future because if you can well then you can start to uh, look at it from from this perspective like okay let's say our objective two million dollars in new revenues all right so let's say you're going there to just get new customers you know whether it's whether you're an established company or whether you're a brand new company <laughs> a new product with no repeat customer base established all right right Pete and uh, uh, so you're going there and you're saying your average sale, you've already told me your average sale is $50,000 each. So that means that essentially this year I am looking for 40 new customers. And, uh, and, and I know, and if I know that my closing rate is 20%, two out of every 10 prospects that I'm in front of, I'm going to close, then I know that in order for me to find 40 new customers, I need to find 200 quality leads this year, all right? So then I say, all right, how many of those quality leads can I uncover at the rental show? And I'm just, like I say, I'm just gonna keep, I wanna keep this just as simple as I possibly can. So now I back up and I start, and I use another formula where I'm gonna plug in some numbers into a formula for you right here, okay? And the formula goes like this. Number one, we start with what are the total, what are the total show hours. We take that number, we multiply it by the average number of staffers that you're going to have working in your booth at any one time, okay? We take the resulting number and we multiply it times the number of leads per hour that your staffers can average, that each one of your staffers can average. Now, think about that for a second. Leads per hour. I'm not talking about conversations per hour, and I'm not even talking about prospects per hour, because in my book, there's a difference between a prospect and a lead. Actually, there's there's kind of a you know it, you know if we look at you know we know we know the funnel right we know the sales funnel and, or marketing funnel however you want however you want to call it, and you know and as we you know if we look at the rental show for example, and we say okay, everybody attending the rental show is a suspect, <laughs> okay? And we're, we're thinking, okay, uh, we suspect that that out of, you know, uh, the, the thousands of people coming to the show that there are a percentage of them who fit the profile of my target market, okay? 
who fit the profile of my target market. That's the the person that you're looking for who has, you know, it depends on, you know, it could be could be uh, you know, it's strictly based on demographics, it could be based on on uh, psychographics, it could be based on whether they focus on uh, um, you know, construction, whether they focus on events, uh, you know, anything like that to where you've defined that this is the person that you're looking for, all right? Now now all that means is you've identified that somebody might fit the profile of your target market. And that that person that person is a certain percentage of all the suspects that are coming there. But now you got to take it one step further. And this is this is kind of what is known as lead scoring. And uh, and I would and if you're not familiar with lead scoring, I would certainly encourage you to uh, uh, Google it and study it a little bit more because what it does is lead scoring takes you and it now you now define the profile. You identify the profile of the person you're looking for. That person is now a prospect. But then, in addition to that, you now add in what is their level of interest in your company and your products. And you put that together with, with the other one. And if you have somebody who fits the profile and who has an interest, if they have a high interest, a medium interest, it doesn't matter, uh, then, uh, then they become what I call a lead. Now, think about that for a second, okay? You can have somebody who fit, totally fits the profile of your target market, right? But what if they have absolutely no interest in doing business with you? What if they're already doing business with somebody else and, 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 and in fact that somebody else is their brother-in-law and if they, you know, leave that, you know, you know stop working with their brother-in-law, you know, their, you know, uh, their wife or husband is going gonna, is gonna to kill them, right? See, so you see, you have a situation where you might find somebody who you believe is qualified, but you know what? They have no interest. Well, that's a, that's not a lead. That's still a prospect. You can still put them in the funnel, you, you know, for follow up and staying in touch with and things like that. But I would say that right now, uh, that person does not define as a lead. You see, to me, a lead is somebody who who kind of falls into the uh, the, the sales ready uh, uh, conveyor belt. They might not be ready immediately, but because they fit my profile and because they've shown an interest, they now go on to my sales ready. Uh, um, conveyor belt, they are now what I call a lead. And so we multiply these numbers out, and this now comes out to the total number of leads that are generated for us at the show. Let's plug in the real numbers now. Let, I mean, using using my fictitious example here, we know that the rental show is open for 19 hours. That's that that that's a fact. Now let's say you are a company, my my fictitious company uh, that is uh, going there to uh, um, build new customer base or or add new customers. Let's say that they're going to have on average four staffers working every hour during the show. Now it might be the same four, it might be rotating. You know, people that have uh, have different shifts. Okay, so they have four staffers working every hour, 19 hours during the show. That comes out to a total of 76 staff hours, right? So now we multiply it times what we consider to be our objective as far as we think that we can have each one of us, if we are rocking and rolling, that we can generate two leads per hour. Now, does that sound low to you? Really, when you think about it, what you're saying is that every 30 minutes during the show, on average, on average, of course, because we know there are slow times, there are high, you know, busy times, but on average, we say that each person can generate two quality leads per hour. Now, again, fictitious company. For some companies, they're going to generate, you know, there are companies out there that will generate four, four leads per hour, six leads per hour, something like that, because they don't have to have a long conversation with people. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. but there are also companies out there who might not even be able to average one lead per hour because they might have a higher cost item, uh, you know, let's say in the construction world, you know, that, that um, you know, that the, that the products are, are obviously much higher cost uh, and maybe the, the sale period is, is much longer, things like that. Whatever it is, uh, you, you, you want to try to figure out what you think is a realistic number. See, you, you might talk to 10 people an hour, but out of that 10, you identify two as quality leads. So in this example, at two leads per hour, that means at the end of the show, I'm going to have 152 leads. Now, if I want to, uh, I can take this one step farther. Because remember, I said that, that, uh, um, uh, that I have an average of 20, uh, I have a 20% closing rate. Here's where this becomes critical. 
because if I have an av if I'm going to close 20% of those 152, well, essentially I'm looking at 30 new customers as a result of being at the show. So now I can go to the rental show and I can say to myself, all right, and, and if you're writing orders at the show, you can do this too. You can say, all right, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking for 30, you know, orders at the show. Now, of course, I'm talking about somebody who's averaging fifty thousand dollars, you know, orders. You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yours is isn't that high. Maybe it's a few hundred dollars, and you expect to write a lot of orders at the show, and that's fine. Uh, but here is where you can start to look at uh, the specific, measurable, and meaningful objectives for the show. Let's say you are going for leads as most of most companies go for. Well, then your objective is a hundred and fifty to leads, quality leads, people who fit the profile and who have shown some level of interest uh, for your company at the show. Now, uh, and, and so you say, that's my number, right? And of course, you now sit down with your staffers and you say, guess what? Each one of you is responsible for two leads per hour. Or you say to somebody, all right, you're working, you know, 10 hours at the show. Um, your, your quota is 20 leads. You need to find 20 leads of people who are defined like this. They're defined in, as, as, as this is the profile of who we're looking for, and they have a level of interest in, in our product or service. So from here, you see, you can now say, oh, I can measure my success at the show. I can measure my ROI at the show because I know that these are the steps that I have to go through anyway in order to make a sale. Uh, and what I'm using the rental show for is to shorten that sales cycle. All right, is to is to cut as many steps out as possible. You know, but I can go there and I can say, all right, uh, my objective is that I'm going to have 30, uh, you know, uh, sales at the show. That's fine. No problem at all, uh, you know. My, you know, but we can, and you can adjust this. And of course, it it changes by the number of staffers that you've got working at the show. It changes by the number of leads per hour uh, that you you can get at the show, and it changes with your closing rate at the show, uh, which is again why I say it's so important to know that that close rate. So the big thing here is that you need to determine your goals in advance. The problem that most companies have, again, when they nowadays with trade shows, is they don't think about it from this perspective of that that I need to determine my goals in advance. Let's go back to that company that had the you know the the, the multiple criteria, and their first one was uh, you, know, you know was uh, leads lead generation, right? Well, the fact of the matter was was that they said, "Yeah, we're going to go there to generate as many leads as we possibly can." That is that is a vague goal, okay? Because when I when I asked them in a conversation later on, I said, "So, when you went to the show the last time and leads were one of your goals at the show, how many leads did you expect to generate at that show?" And their response to me was, "Well, as many as possible." So, see, I'm saying, well, wait a minute, okay? Let me go back to this. Wait a minute. Let me go back to this number, you know, this slide and look at this, okay? If I had, you know, they say as many as possible. And uh, um, let's say that they generate, now here, you know, I'm saying the goal is 152. But let's say they don't have that goal. They say, I'm, I'm there to generate as many leads as possible. Well, what if they generate uh, 200 leads? They don't know that they've had an awesome show. What if they generate 100 leads? They don't know that they're that they suck. <laughs> you know, they don't know because they don't have that number. It's just like with your fiscal objectives. There's a reason why we say we're going to generate ten million dollars this year. It's so that at the end of the year we know how we did. It's so we know how to plan for you know our our, our year long plan of attack for going after that ten million dollars. That's why we set those th those goals in advance. So we we must determine our goals in advance of the show and they must be measurable in order for us to be able to then link that to ROI later on. And yes, you can have other goals. So like for example, um, one of my favorite goals is actually post-show appointments or some type of specific follow-up that is going to happen after the show is after the show is over with see um, you know here's another thing and I'm kind of I, I might be kind of cheating here by giving you a little bit uh, more than just ROI but uh, that's all right we got a little bit of time here but uh, one of the biggest failures of 
trade show exhibitors is the post show. Uh, in fact, a, a too high percentage of exhibitors uh, even j just don't even bother to, to follow up after the show, uh, uh, which is which is silly. It's it's in fact it, it's stupid, uh, and, uh, and and there are multiple reasons why they don't. Uh, I don't need to get into them right now, but uh, an awful lot of staffers at the show and companies at the show when they meet with somebody they don't set up what I call specific uh, mutual agreed follow-up steps uh, you know if you're talking to somebody and you say oh you know we should we should set up an appointment well you know what too often uh, a staffer will say something like yeah we should set up an appointment I'll follow up with you after the show to set up an appointment that's not that's what is that that doesn't mean anything uh, you know, because they might not remember. They, you know, they, they've, you know, they talked to you know dozens of people at the show, and they might forget that you know they agreed to set something up with you. And you know, you're emailing them. Hey, yeah, sure, let's email them and get you know, and and we'll just be part of their spam filter or, or whatever it is after after the show and try to con try to contact them. Or we'll call them. Oh wait, they have voicemail because everybody's hiding behind voicemail these days. No, you see what you want to do at the show is once you've identified somebody who fits the profile once they've shown an interest you can you know you're going to talk to them uh, actually for as long as you can as long as you're having a a meaningful uh, um, conversation with them but you're going to reach a point where you're going to say you know what uh, we can't really do much more here at the show we need to set up something to happen after the show what is that that you're going to set up is it a post show appointment? You know what? I need to come out and see you. Uh, I need to I need to come and see your store uh, so that I can uh, better better help you uh, um, with with the right fit of products that we should set up for you. Do you have your date? You know, do you have your date book with you? Do you have your planner with you? Do you have your iPhone with you or you know your smartphone with you and with your calendar? Because why don't we set that date up right now? Okay, so you're setting up the appointment right there on the spot. If it's a post show, a telephone call. How are you going to connect with them? When are you going to connect with them? If it's a follow up where you're you're sending something to them or even emailing them, then you want to be as specific with them and get them to agree to that post show action step so that you both understand exactly what you're doing af after the show is over with. Companies will ask me. They'll say, "Hey, what kind of a post show plan should we have? You know, what what should we do? Should we send out send out a big mailing blast? What should we, do? you know, big email blast? What should we do?" And I say, "No, you know what? Every, you know, your post show plan every is is individual plans. Every single uh, attendee that you talk to, every single lead that you generate, every customer that you meet with, every single one of them has their own specific post show action follow up step." That's your post show plan. So post show appointments. I love appointments because boy, you know that what you know. If you can set appointments with them, they are qualified. Absolutely. Surveys can be good. You know, if you're using that to uh, determine some, uh, uh, to understand the market better, uh, and you see that as a way as as connecting the dots with it. It's kind of more like like I've got you know secondary after PR down there. Uh, you know, it's kind of more of a secondary goal. I would rather not have that as a primary goal. Building your database is fine if you're new to the industry and you want to build your database. That's fine, but don't do it like you know where you say you know throw your business card in this in this uh, fishbowl and win an iPad. And uh, uh, by the way, I am sure, I am sure that there are multiple of you that are giving away iPads at the show. Uh, and gee, that's original. Um, so uh, let's see. Think about think about what else you might be able to give away that isn't quite as common today. Um, but you can build your database, but make sure that you're building your database intelligently. That they you know don't collect names just willy nilly. Don't have fish bowls because then all you're doing is you, all you're doing then is now you're just collecting all the suspects. That's all. Okay. You can meet with current customers like I talked to, like I talked about earlier, and PR is good too. Uh, as, you know, uh, you know, for all companies, all size companies, PR is still very good. But it, again, it should be a secondary, secondary goal. All right. So what I want you to remember now is to make sure that your goals are meaningful, measurable and linked and when i say linked i'm talking about linked to the big objectives linked to the, the the big stuff that your company is trying to accomplish you know um remember this all right corporate objectives 
define any and all marketing objectives, not the other way around. Okay, translate corporate objectives down. All right, until you reach an easy to define objective, you know, go backwards with that stuff. You know, and trade show objectives should always be based on that lowest definition. So, I, you know, for me, lead is a really great way to start. Okay, and they must be measurable in advance. In advance, what I really, really want to make sure that you guys all understand is, don't be this exhibitor. Okay, don't be this person that 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 you know they 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 dropped out. They're going to come back next time uh, because they just got spanked really bad by their. Uh, customer base and by the marketplace uh, for not being there. Uh, don't be this exhibitor. Be smart. You know, set up your set up your objectives in advance because that way you can then say, all right, I can connect the dots um, with a solid line to ROI after the show is over with. So that's how you do it. And uh, you know what? It's not rocket science. So let's see what kind of questions I'm going to look over here now. Uh, what kind of questions? <laughs> Okay, here's one. Uh, you know, now I need a great idea instead of a fish bowl. <laughs> um, well, actually, you know, let's see. Them. We might be able to help help you with that. I, um, uh, I'll have to talk to the ARA people, but uh, we might do something where is, uh, we might be able to do another webinar that's along the lines of of promotional stuff. Um, let me just give you. Let me just give you this. Uh, food for thought here on uh, on on that that comment um, I believe that probably one of the most important things that you can do in addition to uh, uh, you know having set measurable objectives before the show because you got to admit if you set measurable objectives before the show and you're able to, to break them down all the way down to where each staffer understands what they're they're there to do well you know what that changes everything that changes everything. It ch everybody understands this. I, I've always said, you know, people are smart. If they know what they're supposed to do, you know, uh, then then they're they're pretty smart. Uh, um, you know, I don't I don't need to beat them up and, and treat them like like uh, little children or anything like that. But one of the things that that uh, uh, is really really important today is pre-show promotion. Pre-show promotion, in my mind, is probably more important than how great your booth looks. Now, I'm sure some of you are like, what? Wait a minute, I just spent, you know, $100,000 on my booth. Yeah, well, okay, that's this year and, you know, it's done and stuff like that. But but really, pre-show promotion, if you do really, really strong, effective pre-show promotion, that has a stronger impact on your results than your booth design. Because in advance of the show, you know, most attendees are going to have most of their uh, uh, their time is going to be blocked off for appointments that they've set at the show. It's going to be blocked off uh, not for, and then after the appointments, they're going to have a list of people and exhibitors that they want to see uh, at the show. And and what's going to end up happening is that over half the time that they spend on the show floor is going to already be on their agenda before they get. To the show. And that's why pre-show promotion is so important. I would much rather be, you know, a hard-hitting uh, pre-show campaign that it that email is not my only tool. In fact, email would probably be be my last tool to use. Uh, but I would I would use hard-hitting pre-show promotion to get people to put me on their agenda before they come to the show. Um, Let's see. Let me go these in, in in this order here. What is a good sequence of questions to profile suspects without them <laughs> knowing they're being profiled? Well, okay. Let's 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 make sure we understand something, right? Everybody's there to do business. They understand that you are there to do business. So I don't think that asking some very you know like you know you're asking questions. You're asking them to tell you about their business. Number one. Uh, um, you're not. You're, you're asking questions more than you're just selling your stuff. Uh, um, you should. You know, who are they? What do they do? Uh, what is what? You know, where do they spend most of their their time and in, in their 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 business? I mean, are, like, again, like I say, are they in construction? Are they in you know tool rentals? Are they uh, um, 
uh, events, you know, events and tents. Uh, um, which area? Which one of those do you want to focus on? Uh, you know, how many sales people do they have that are focused on that area that you work in? Uh, um, you know, what has been their experience in the past? Uh, you, you know, uh, what what is their role? You know, you know, are they the owner? Are they the manager? You know, what are they? Okay, see, these are questions that you can ask them while you're learning about them. It's just natural conversations. Uh, in a business in, in a business environment. I mean, if you stand there with a list and you say, "Okay, question number one is, uh, um, you know, where are you?" Question number. I mean, if if you do it that way, well, then you know, of course, they're going to kind of like, "Eh, come on, you know, you you don't really care about me." But if you talk to people like people and uh, and you know, re realize everybody's there to do business. That's 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 no problem at all. Um, okay, hey Chris, uh, it's only a month until the show now. Exclamation point! Isn't it? Getting too late for pre-show promotion? No, no, it's not too late for pre-show promotion. Oh my goodness. You know, we're, you know, yeah, okay, we're a month away. Is it a month away, five weeks away, whatever it is, uh, something like that? Man, if you have not done any pre-show promotion, it's, it's almost never too late. Uh, if, if you haven't done any, and if you haven't done any effective pre-show promotion. Now, if you tell me, oh, we've done email blasts, well, my response to you is, well, congratulations, you haven't done any pre-show promotion. Because uh, um, you're sending out email blasts? Uh, are, are you not getting enough emails? Uh, is your spam filter not, not full? Uh, you, know, you know, whose emails are you opening up? Uh, are you opening up every single email that comes to you? No. Number one, you open up emails from people that you know. Okay, that's number one. Number two is if you don't know them, you look at the subject line. And if the subject line sounds like it's a uh, um, it's a sale or, or it's a, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, if it's just a sales piece or, or you don't know who they are or something like that, goes in the trash. So don't rely on email. Come on, you know, people. That's just, that, that's uh, uh, lazy. Uh, do, doing that, you got to contact these people. You got to, you know, uh, uh, um, you, you got to pick up the phone and call them. You know, it, it's. I would rather you leave them a voicemail than send them an email because they will hear the voicemail, uh, and you know, keep it nice and short and sweet. Tell them why they should come and see you, uh, but it's a reason that mean that's important to them. Uh, you know, direct mail, postcards, these things can all go out now. You still got plenty of time to get on. To get on their list. So, okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, can I display the screenshot with the goals linked? Uh, uh, see, you you're talking about the one that? Um, uh, let's see. Don't be this. Is this the one? I think that's the one you're talking about. Uh, don't be this customer. Don't be this exhibitor. Um, so I'll leave that there. We let us know as soon as you have confirmed if you can do a promotional webinar. Uh, we will let you know. It, even if we don't do do one, I am going. I will send out an email blast to you guys uh, on where you can get where you can get this stuff. I've got some other I've got some other information that that you can have. In fact, I'll probably send out an email blast uh, where you can get a free copy of one of my books. Uh, uh, Oh, the page before the Don't Be This Customer. Let's see. That one? Okay. Debbie, tell me if that's the one you're talking about. Um, uh, so, uh, so Natalie, if I don't, uh, uh, if we don't do a webinar, then we will. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Uh, if not email, then what? Yeah, snail mail? Absolutely. In fact, direct mail um, is probably the best tool to use. Because think about this for a second on, on direct mail. Like I say, postcards. Uh, I like. To, I actually like to send greeting cards because everybody opens greeting cards. Uh, and uh, uh, but think about it. Your mailbox is not as full as it used to be. See, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so, and we still look at our mail. I mean, yeah, we we stand over the trash can and uh, toss stuff away. But if your mail is interesting, and here's how you do it. If you you know if you don't send like a, a greeting card, everybody opens a greeting card. Um, the the next thing that they open are personal letters. You know, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to send out a, you know, ten thousand, but I will pick out, let's say, a hundred uh, people who I really, really want to see at the show, and then I will just, I will just, uh, uh, you know, I'll send them a postcard, I'll send them a letter, uh, I, I, you know, might leave a voicemail for them, something like that, and I'm giving them meaningful reasons why it's important for them to come and see me, and uh, and then I will, but and every single touch point, remember this, every single touch point, just like a trade show, treat it as a direct response tool. Direct response tool. It means it has a response-driven action step 
inside. So if you leave a voicemail, you tell them, uh, here's my phone number if you want to call me, here's my email address if you want to email me. If I send it on a postcard uh, or in a letter, I will not only have my phone number but if I have and my email, but I might have a link uh, to a, a web page that they can go to. But the link has it, 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 it has a code in it, all right? It's a specific link that they go to. That way I know whether, the, you know, where that person came from when they come, when they do finally contact me. So I'm going to use all of those to all of those tools to try to set up uh, my success before the show as, as best, best as I possibly can. Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. No email blast. No e-blast. My spam is full. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't see any more questions here. But I do promise that I will send you. Uh, I will send. I will follow up with you. I will have this uh, archived and up on a web page um, for you um, probably this afternoon, and I'll send that out. And I know ARA will send that out as well. Um, and um, with that, I'm going to say that I don't see any more questions coming out from you guys. I'm going to give you five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Mm. No more questions. Hey, this is Steve Miller. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you very much for attending this today. I will be at the show. Remember, uh, you'll see me running around. I always have an orange shirt on. So if you see a guy with an orange shirt uh, and uh, it looks like he's not a customer, <laughs> he just looks like he's he's being nosy, that's probably me. So, uh, and I'm sure that I'll be talking to you again before the show. Thank you again for joining me today. Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad. She's a golfer for Portland State University. Very proud dad. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you on the internet.